Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from MechTech Keyboards. Today we are taking a look at a new low-profile keyboard from James Donkey. I previously reviewed uh, both the RS2 or the KeyMonkey 1800 as well as the A3, uh, which is a 75% with a knob. The one that I've got is, I think, one of the first ones. It has the orange bottom and the black top. And I've bought it and I've actually quite enjoyed the keyboard. I think it's very well built and um, I enjoy using it. It does come up in my rotation. There are some low profile keyboards I've come across that are just, there's something missing. I mean, it's almost like, why wouldn't I just be using a membrane keyboard in this case? But there are a few that I like, I mean, for instance, the Air series uh, from Newfie Studios. Uh, I have yet, I'm waiting, I'm on the list to be reviewing their new V2s because they just released a new, a new revision of the Air 65 and the Air 75, I believe. Don't quote me on that, I don't recall. Um, last time I talked to them, they wanted me to review the Gem 80, which they'll be sending out to me shortly, and I'll obviously be reviewing it and posting it up. But that being here neither here or there i have a couple of key crons um low profiles and they're optical which i just i don't think that optical switches are actually even getting made anymore there's only a couple of keyboard manufacturers that actually still i don't know if they're selling you know old stock or or what i don't think they're being made anymore because i mean that i know of there's maybe a handful over a dozen switches that are available and they're your standard ones and there's really just not i don't know people i've read articles that say optical or better than mechanical it's like i really don't get it i mean they're both just uh, interrupting or connecting a circuit depending on how you look at it um the optical blocks a light beam while the mechanical uses the leaf springs connection when you press down um, I don't see just because one is light one is using light and one's using a mechanical motion how one can be faster than the other I personally I've <clears throat> personally I've never found a set of optical switches that I like that being said everything or the the new exciting thing seems to be the Hall effect uh, switches um, and a lot of manufacturers are coming out with them. I have a Hall Effect keyboard that I will be reviewing shortly, uh, but we're not there. This is a low profile. Low profile keyboards, like the ones from Newfie, they all have the same, if they're hot swappable, they have the same um, pin layout. I have seen, I have probably, let's say four or five low profile switches that all have different pin layouts and none of them are chalk. So that's not the issue. These are MX compatible tops or with a cross and they, they don't fit each other. So it's like there doesn't seem to be a standard amongst um, low profile switches. And for the most part, they're just not very easy to take out and replace. Because they're so short and the tolerances on the plates seem to be quite tight um i i haven't really had much luck and then i mean i have lubed a few but it's it, they're hard to open and if you can open it without breaking it i mean it's it takes a lot longer to just get in there than it takes to lube so it's like it's a lot of effort for not that much reward Though, like I said, with the Air, I have been hearing a lot of great things with their new V2, especially the fact that it's a QMK via keyboard. But I don't know about the switches yet until I get them, and I know that they have um, a new selection of switches, which I'm interested to try out. I did for the previous Air 75 or 96. I, I was sent um, a packet of each of the switches, and I did sound test for each of them. And they're in my history, or I can look them below if you guys would like. But... This one, I, I gotta say, I 
know very little about. Uh, Mech Keys did send out this keyboard to me in exchange for my honest review. I've been working with them for a little over a year now. It's funny because I'm Mech Tech keyboards and they're Mech Keys. And I honestly, when I started, I hadn't seen their shop yet. I didn't come across their shop until one day when I was looking for my channel and came across their store. And I'm like, hey, we share similar names. So it's not like I was copying them. Um, it was just, I mean, Mech keys, mech tech keys. I, I mean, in, in, for my, for my professional career, I was an IT specialist, but I mean, everything from repairing systems, networking, all the way up to being an executive uh, technology or information officer, um, architecting software, setting up databases, uh, data centers, um, outlying the entire architecture of how a solution was going to be implemented. So I figured, well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a techie. I'm also a Trekkie. So I'm a Trekkie techie or a techie Trekkie. Anyway, that's either, neither here nor there, but that's, so it's just a funny coincidence. So I like the fact that, um, I get to work with them every once in a while. They send me out a keyboard and, um, so far they seem to be happy and, and I'm happy to be honest. It's another one of the shops that they don't take my criticism of a product as an affront to them because they know I'm not, you know, I'm not just out to, oh, let me see how bad I can knock something out. No, I'm going to point out things that I personally find, you know, good, not so good. And I wish it was done better, but I don't obviously go into a keyboard expecting to attack it. Um, I want to find things that I like about it. Now this keyboard, I know very little about. I do know that it's three mode and it has a double shot PBT keycaps. It had, oh, it's using the Gatoron 2.0s, but it doesn't say if they're hot swap or not. So I don't know if I'll be able to switch them out because I do believe that Gatoron dwarf shaft is similar to the Nufi ones, which I have plenty of them, which I'd like to try out maybe when I come back to it. But it doesn't say anything about hot swap. And if it doesn't have a key switch puller, though most key switch pullers for standard Cherry MX switches do not work um, or don't work as well for low profile switches. And a lot of times you have to actually grab them from the sides instead of from the top and the bottom. So, um, I'm going to do my best to figure out if these are hot swap or not without breaking it. But, oh, and th that's another thing. They have a large capacity, 3000 milliamp hour battery for a low profile. That's I think pretty good. Although like there's some brands like uh, red dragon, for instance, I have had Red Dragon boards. I have one in particular that I use wirelessly a lot of the time. And I got another board that was wireless that had, I want to say a 4,500 milliamp hour battery. And this Red Dragon had like a, I want to say 1,150 milliamp hour battery. They were both 65%. That Red Dragon with that smaller battery actually lasted I think three times as long as the other one that had a 4,500. I mean, more than three times the size. I had to charge it more often. And it's like, I don't know what technology they're using in their wireless. And this is over 2.4 Bluetooth, although 2.4 does, in my limited testing, does seem to use a little less battery than Bluetooth. But Bluetooth 5.0 LE seems to use the least amount of juice that I've seen, period. But anyway, so, to me, while I report on the sizes of batteries, I, I think every manufacturer implements different technologies in as far as how they either gulp or sip the power. But this one is also filled with silicone and EVA. So it should sound pretty good sock, especially if the switches that it includes are already pre-factory lubed, which I hope they are because, I mean, it's a low profile. Let's go ahead and get into it and see what we've got. All right, opening up the box, we see that we have uh, basically an 1800% layout though. I've all, uh, if this is exploded, it's really 1800. So this is technically a 96%, but 
I kind of use the term interchangeably, so please excuse me, and if you want to correct me, do so below in the comments. I, I do my best to inform myself, but there's so much just cross information that it's like, all right, well, I'll just report it both ways. Now, we do have what looks like to be a built-in um, user guide card. Uh, now, it is in Chinese, but I like the fact that it's actually on the box because you're not going to lose it. I mean, I don't know how many times somebody's been like, hey, anybody have the manual for X, Y, and Z keyboard? And I'm like, I have that keyboard. I have the box. But I don't know where the manual is. And I do have a folder, and it's actually a couple folders now, that are chock full of, of manuals for keyboards. And I actually intended to go through and scan them all and actually create a wiki. And at some point I'll do something to that effect because, I mean, obviously I'd like to include manuals for keyboards that I may not have so that there's one central repository. And my dream would be to convert them to you know, use OCR to convert the text over so that they can become searchable, so that you can search for LMK67 function lock and be able to get to right in that manual, right at that spot where it gives you that functionality. So uh, I just came across an issue today, well, not with me, but somebody on Budget Keeps were like, uh, when I press the, the number keys, they're all function keys in the keyboard tester. And we could not find a way, I couldn't find a way to lock the function key because it wasn't in the manual. And um, I actually reached out to Waycav to see if they could provide me some support on that. But I just, I was like, have you tried resetting the keyboard? And they reset the keyboard and it went back. So, but I still don't know how to enable or disable function lock on that keyboard. So thing, little things like that, that can be added to like, hey, it's not in the manual, it's not anywhere, but this keyboard can be, you know, function lock doing this, or it could be win lock doing that and so on. But um, I've seen this colorway before, but I honestly can't say I know what it is. It's a white alphas uh, with the alternating function row, gray modifiers and green highlight keys. I don't know if this has any extra keys, but I do appreciate that it has a dust cover. Uh, dust covers help keep, keep a keyboard clean. And if you don't use one and you haven't cleaned your keyboard in a while, I suggest taking off a few keycaps. <laughs> dust is everywhere. It's a good idea to keep them clean. So anyway, let's go ahead and take this out. I'm gonna set it aside just for a second to see what else we've got here. All right, so we've got a USB-C to USB-A adapter. And this, I guess it would be used for connecting a USB-C cable to the USB-A cable to the USB. i not exactly sure what this is for. Okay, so we've got that. We've got a cable with an elbow and it's USB-A to USB-C, and then we have a manual. So I don't see any keycap pullers. I don't even see it. I don't see a, I don't see a key switch puller. I don't see a keycap puller. So I'm gonna assume they're probably not hot swap. I'm gonna go ahead and, well, I may need this. Let me leave this out. I'm not gonna use the cable for now, and I, I don't, like I said, Uh, it's just for the 2.4. So. Oh, I was going to say, where is the 2.4? But there it is right there. So I don't know if this is, like if you only have USB-C, you can plug the USB-C cable into your computer and then plug the, um, the 2.4 into this. So. I'm guessing that's what that's for. Let's see the back. We have the USB-C, and then we have a button for USB or wireless, and it's just a sticker that's there, so. Oh, all right, so we'll have to guess at that. Um, I prefer switches over buttons, but that's just me. Um, I kind of like the design, how they have this bar here, and some of the case rubbed off on the case, or some of the innards of the box rubbed off on the case. 
but not not bad not bad sound just uh get my first impressions out so let me go ahead and get the stuff out of the way all right so as we can see we have not quite a wedge design it's more of a bar on the back and the rest of it's kind of flat um, it does have a low angle and I really don't know why, but it doesn't have any feet. Um, this is a pretty low angle, and I mean, I would suggest using a wrist rest, but the problem is that the wrist rest sits almost, wow, almost nine millimeters above a standard wrist rest. So, which is, uh, in my opinion, not not ideal um, because you're going to be twisting your wrist up, and it, it's not. Honestly, this is not a comfortable angle for me. So, but because the other low-profile boards, I mean, they have feet, so I can adjust. But the angle on this, I mean, just out of curiosity, and I will capture this for the. Um, spec section but just to get a uh, feel on it real quick huh it's actually telling me that it's a seven degree angle it does not feel that way I think it's because it's so low um, let me see the chin is sitting here at wow <laughs> just a little over 10 millimeters probably 10 I pushed a little too hard let me try that again Oh, 10, 10 and a half, basically, millimeters for the chin of the keyboard. That's kind of low. Now, I do know it's a profile, a low profile keyboard, but that is too low. I'd say 18 and above. And I think that would have bought them a little bit more room to throw in some feet because I can understand when we're dealing with a fully aluminum keyboard not having feet. Though I do have some aluminum case keyboards that have adjustable feet. So, but when it's plastic, I don't get what the excuse is not to have um, non-folding or adjustable feet. I mean, even give me something magnetic, which, I mean, don't get me wrong. They're quite easy to get lost, but they are magnetic. So at least I have the option to raise or lower and with this one i would literally have front and back one so that i could actually raise the front as well i really don't know how much usability testing is actually done uh, with these keyboards because i mean they for the most part these companies are kind of a black box i mean i know when i develop software packages especially ones that were going to be you you know used by a number of individuals, whether at a corporation or publicly used or, you know, accessible to businesses, what have you. We did a lot of usability testing. Um, now, granted, most companies I worked with, we also did accessibility testing. But, you know, we ensured that, you know, people understood the interface like we did. Oh, this is the way you got to use it. Okay, this goes like this. And, you know, we aimed to do our best to deliver products that were easy to understand and you you could basically guess or decipher from the way everything was set up on how to use it how to go to the next step um, using similar cues as you know Microsoft or Google or Apple or what have you with depending on what platform we are so that we could um, so people could actually recognize some of the ways things were done because we were using similar layouts similar you know material themes or um, and ways of laying out forms buttons fields and all of that so that people could go through it without having to think too much about it because it was similar to X Y or Z product but when it comes to keyboards sometimes I I pulled a few keyboards out of the box that I'm like did anybody test this keyboard besides just the engineer because don't get me wrong there was times that I was you know Friday night hey 
can you, uh, you know, I, I need you to just put together a quick little utility that will grab this from that database and spit out an access or a TXT file or, you know, CSV, whatever. And when I didn't have a front end guy, I mean, don't get me wrong, I could do front ends, but I usually prefer to just hand it off to the front end guy because they, you know, they, they're just better at that. I was better at making code that didn't leak memory and it ran fast. And usually I, I tried to stay as low on lines as code as possible. Though, I mean, I liked it to compile as small as possible. So to have as small as footprint as possible. But anyway, point is that sometimes I would develop these little tools and they're like, well, how exactly do I use it? because I didn't have even the time to try to think about usability. I was just thinking about functionality. So sometimes I get the impression with some keyboards that it's just the engineers that have really tested it and it might work for them in their particular setup, but they haven't gotten feedback from others. I really would like to know if, if they do this and um, how much of it they do, because it would be nice to know that they're actually doing, you know, usability testings and, you know, people are getting, you know, actual people that use the keyboard, like, you know, not content creators, but, you know, hand them out to a few office workers, even in their own business. And, hey, can you use this for a week and then fill out this form? Simple as that. So you'll, you'll find, I think they, they would find things that are beneficial to helping them create a better product. Anyway, so we've got, like I said, 96% because it is compressed, so we'll stick with that. Um, not sure what that button's for. It is a linear switch. And it has a decent amount of weight. I would say 40, maybe 45 grams. The stabilizers are okay till we get to the space bar. There's definitely some ticking. Well, that one doesn't sound that good either, so let me see what these look like. Actually, this one oh, I was not even aware that this was on. All right, it looks like we might only have a white backlight on this keyboard. That's the brightness. Yeah. Looks to be a monochrome single light and I am going to gather that these switches are not hot swappable. I'm trying a key that I don't know what it is for, but I'm going to see. Yeah, these, these do not appear to be hot swappable. Not only did they not include a switch puller or even a keycap puller for that matter, um, I just don't see these coming out. I mean, <laughs> we gotta love my switch puller. I have to bend you back into shape, buddy. All right, so for stabilizers, we do have plate mounted stabilizers. And... All right, this does appear to be Aluminum. Oh no, it might be plastic. It's not magnetic, but I can't tell if it's magnetic or plastic to be quite honest. Now we do have the um, alternate symbols if you're going into uh, Mac mode. But these uh, these stabilizers, they are quite tight on here. But because these switches are most likely soldered, I don't see any way of getting these out of here but these are probably they are completely and absolutely dry so out of curiosity I'm gonna take see these actually sound pretty good this one doesn't I want to stay stock. I do want to at least add a little bit. Not much and not as nicely as I'd like to, but I'm just going to inject a little bit of lube at the corners here. So I just did the most minimal lubing on there. Oh, it definitely makes a difference. So at least 
you can make them sound a little bit better, but it'd be so much better if these switches, I, I'm sorry, I keep sweeping cat hair away. My uh, cats love to just go all over everything at night when I'm sleeping. Uh, this morning I woke up to an entire set of uh, milky yellows that I was lubing and they were all over the floor and I'm still like eight shy. I don't know, <laughs> they just disappeared into the cat dimension, I guess. Or maybe they used them as hockey pucks and took them further into the house. But, well, these are definitely brown switches as they feel like drunk linears. It's, the, the hump is nearly imperceptible. All right, so now let's try out the wireless connections. All right, so let's do Bluetooth first. So we're gonna turn on the wireless switch, which is, turn on the wireless switch. There's a wireless button, there's no switch. All right, so that's wireless. Get the lights come on here. And it says to go into the, um, I think it's F1. Oh, this has Bluetooth 5.1. All right, so function one. Okay, yeah, we see the uh, the keys there. And all right, so it's blinking nice and fast. Let me go into my systems here and see if we can uh, detect this. Oh, there it is, right away popped up. Let me pair with it. And. showing me the battery percentage and it connected fairly quick. That's actually quite nice. I like it when it just connects just like that and that one did that. So, especially because this is, I mean, meant to be a portable for the most part since it is a, uh, you know, low profile, it's lightweight and it has the three mode. So having that ability to just quickly switch it to the uh, wireless mode is great. So, but let, now let's try 2.4. Now 2.4 usually is a bit faster. Um, even though, I mean, for me, it's either here or there. I have, I think the last time I looked, there was maybe eight dozen 2.4 gigahertz <laughs> networks. And there's actually still people in my area that use wireless 2.4 gigahertz landline phones. So. It's very um, inundated with 2.4, but for the most part, 2.4 works for me. I just prefer Bluetooth. So let me go ahead and plug this in. So it wants me to connect it after it started blinking. So it's blinking. Pulled it out. Now I'm pulling it back in. All right, and there we go. Yep, that's pretty instant as well. So wireless connectivity, it looks like we got it. Um, Obviously, we don't have the ability to change colors on the lights. We have a num lock indicator. We have a caps lock indicator. And that appears to be a power indicator or charging. Low power status. If the power supply is lower than 30%, the red light blinks charging state. The red light is steady on during charging. Fully charged, 100% of the battery is steady green. So, I guess it's just when it's plugged in. Um... We have the Mac mode functionalities for Mac mode to get into F1, you have to do function F1, okay? Because I think they just revert to the system keys. I think that's what Mac OS X calls them. And to factory reset it, it's function delete for five seconds. Um, for the window key lock, it's function windows for five seconds. And in wired mode, the keyboard does not sleep. In wireless mode, the keyboard does not operate for one minute after the light goes out and it enters the power saving, triggering any any key, triggering any key to wake it up, to wake it up. La, 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 la. And they're very clear about not to use a charging port that's over the USB 2.0. So nothing over five volts, one amp. So go ahead and turn wireless mode off button switch 
and then plug it in. All right, it appears to be in Mac mode, so I'm going to switch over to Windows mode. Oh, the keys are just switched. I just realized that. It's already, these, these keys are set up as though this one is the Windows key. And this one's the Alt key. So, I don't see anything about changing effects, so it looks like you can either speed it up or slow it down. I'm honestly neither here nor there uh, when it comes to LEDs. Either have LEDs, but do RGB, or don't have LEDs, and just have like an LED for cap, a num lock, or an indicator like this. A single monochrome RGB, in my opinion, just kind of leaves the end user with a color that in case they want to put on a key cap set that clashes with the color that they've chosen. Mm, I don't know. But that's just me. Um, granted, I do think that this is more for work than for play. So I think that's why they kept it, you know, a single monochrome color. Let's keep it business only. Now, we do have double shot keycaps, but these are top double shot. That means only the top receives that double shot, but the rest of the body does not. Let's see if we can get enough of it here to measure. Oh, actually 1.5 millimeters for low profile keycaps is actually a decent size thickness. I would prefer to have the ability to replace the switches, but because I don't get the impression that this is hot swappable, nothing says that it is. Um, and the little bit that I tried to yank, I mean, I more, I came closer to destroying my switch puller than to actually pulling anything out. So I'm going to assume that these are not um, hot swap, but at some point I'll get in here, I'll open it up, and then I'll know for sure if they are hot swap or not. But I'm pretty sure I'll lay my money down, or my dollar bet, that they are not hot swappable. And this, I believe, turns off the light. Oh, there's that. Oh, okay, there's a different light function. So, there's different light effects. But it's really just the rate at which they're blinking. Solid, or you can turn them off. So yeah, if you're looking for RGB, this isn't it. We're looking at a... This is for work. I mean, that's... I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm sure you can play some games on it, but I, in my opinion, this is the we're going to work keyboard or going on the road keyboard for the road warrior. At least the switches aren't pingy, but they are scratchy, which will go away after some use. But <clears throat> being as they're browns, they're just... I mean, the tactile bump is there and you're going to feel it, but if you're not paying attention, you'll miss it because it is a, what I like to call a drunk linear. So I keep wanting to flip the feet up because this is too flat of a keyboard for me. I mean, this is a, it's just, I don't understand why there isn't flip out feet. Just the specs. Today we are taking a look at the James Donkey S2. It's a 96% three-mode, low-profile keyboard from James Donkey. This one particular was sent to me by MetKeys. This is a keyboard that is preloaded with low-profile Gateron brown switches, has white LED backlighting, a north-facing PCB, and appears to be, from all notes, non-hot swappable. This keyboard comes weighing in at 605 grams, has a battery of 3,000 milliamp hours. Its chin sits at 10.5 millimeters above the typing surface, while the back sits at 20 and a half millimeters above the typing surface, providing for a seven degree typing angle. It does not have any adjustable feet. Those are the only angles available. 
The keycaps on this keyboard are double shot PBT, though they're only top double shot. And they have a 1.5 millimeter thickness. The MSRP for this keyboard from Met Keys is $69.99. So, short of me opening up, I'm, I'm really not going to know if they're hot swap, but I'm, like I said, I'd put my dollar on the fact that it's not, because I'm pretty, I've gotten pretty good at pulling out hot, uh, low profile switches, and I mean, I was about to break this one over here, so I'm pretty sure it's not, though I will come back and open it up. Um, as far as low profile keyboards go, this is not the best, but it's also not the worst. I've come across some that are not as good. Um, I like the fast connectivity that this one offers. Keychron low profiles are usually only Bluetooth. Some folks do not have Bluetooth on their computer or it might be an outdated Bluetooth. So having that 2.4 gives that extra wireless option. Um, which I think is important. Uh, and they do have a lot of keyboards that are also non hot swappable with only white backlight. So, putting this keyboard in comparison to Keychrons, this one being a newer one, it does have a little bit of foam. I don't hear as much hollowness as I do on most low profile keyboards. Um, I wish I could take a switch out so I could kind of poke in there and see what's going on, but I'm not really going to know what's going on in there until. I have opened it up. Um, I really can't say enough about not having any adjustable feet. This is supposed to be a ro road warrior keyboard, which means there's going to be situations if you buy this keyboard. When I was a road warrior, there was times I was working out of a hotel room, times I was working out of a borrowed office, times I was working with desks that were this high, desks that was this low, or just working on the conference room table. Uh, having the portability means that I should be able to also, you know, exercise my right to choose different typing angles in case I don't have a wrist rest handy, in case I am in a lower or higher position so that I can adjust the keyboard accordingly and use it in a comfortable manner. Why they skipped out on that, I don't know. Otherwise, I'm, it sounds decent. When I'll come back to it, I'll do an, a better job. Uh, with the, like I said, this, I did this stabilizer, just one, because I want to do a stock sound test here at the end. But I will come back to it and see if I can't, if the switches aren't hot swap, like I assume, I will do, I'll use a brush and I'll get in there and make sure to lubricate these as good as possible. Though th these stabilizers appear to be some of the old style stabilizers that just guaranteed, you know, some sort of ticking, um, on the low profile, being able to take them apart and apply either a plumber's tape mod or the band-aid type mod, I think would take care of a lot of that. But again, with non-hot swappable switches, eh. so especially all the other James Donkey keyboards I have previously reviewed have hot swap sockets and plenty of other low profile keyboards I have have hot swap sockets. So, I mean, I have a Iyusu um, TKL that has hot swap sockets. And they're actually, for them being Otemu switches, they're actually quite easy to take in and take out. And the beauty is, is that they use the same pin layout as regular switches. I can stick regular switches in there. Yes, they stick up out above the uh, body, but it's still a low profile case. So, that being said, um, I think for a lot of people, this will probably fill the niche. Um, that they need though in today's day and age it's hard for me to justify uh, the price tag I think that this would be better better off and more popular in the $40 um, range but as since it doesn't have hot swap doesn't have adjustable feet only has white backlight only has one choice of switches um, it kind of you know puts itself down Plus, it's also, I mean, not that there's really much room to do a gasket mount. I think it could do a softer mount. Now, it does have the pluses of having some foam in there, and the switches sound to at least be pre-lubed, or at least they don't have any spring ping whatsoever. So, I mean, there is that. But again, in today's market, when you can get 
a 65% aluminum keyboard, bare bone, mind you, but for $40, $50, I'm talking about the Sugar 65, it's hard to justify a $70 keyboard that is missing out on a lot of features that folks kind of expect, like south facing, like RGB, um, you know, like hot swap, and all of these things. Because, I mean, it, even if you're not going to lube the switches or replace them, at least hot swap so I can pop them out and get to the stabilizers and tune them. But I can't even do that. So, now granted, I know that a lot of road warriors aren't going to really be caring about, you know, how does the keyboard sound? How does it perform? It feels nice. It's a little louder than I would expect for a low profile keyboard. Um, so, there's, I think that there's more that could be done. A tape mod probably quiet it down a bit different switches it would make a huge difference but like i said i won't know until i come back to this which i will add to my schedule though it'll be a minute i have hours <laughs> of video that i still need to finish editing and publishing so please be patient with me the holidays this last year were just a little, little bit crazier than normal and on top of that i was uh bedridden for days with a, a lovely case of the flu so please accept my apologies. Um, more videos will be coming out. I'm going to do my best to kind of space them out and not just release them all at once. So, because I do have some pretty cool videos coming soon and some that have been really, <laughs> some folks are like, when are you putting it out? I'm like, I got to get to it. It's in line. Why can't you make it go up the line? I'm like, because I have a schedule. And if I start skipping the line with products, then my schedule is going to go. It's already two weeks behind and I'm trying to compress that and catch up. So, Please have patience with me. Anyway, for today, we took a look at the James Donkey um, S2. I want to keep saying RS2. The RS2 is the, the Keep Monkey 1800, though they have a couple of different variants of it now, and I do want to try out the new one, the V3. But I'll, if you guys have any questions, any comments about this keyboard, put them down in the comments below. Let's get a conversation started. Otherwise, I will uh, come back to this keyboard at some point and see if there's anything that we can do to make it sound, feel, better not even look better maybe maybe with a different set of keycaps who knows we can go crazy on this keyboard so anyway i hope that you guys enjoyed the stock sound test and until the next transmission keep calm and keyboard on